Okay, everyone, thanks for joining us today. Uh, we will get uh, more people here joining us in a little bit, but I wanted to get started. It's 831. Uh, welcome to the 2023 CMA Day Lecture Series. I'm your host, Walt Schultz, with Canopy Mortgage in Salem, Oregon. Before I introduce today's guests, I wanted to remind everybody to please mute yourself if your mics are, are not muted already. Uh, we'll be taking questions at the end, and um, you know, unless Laura wants to have questions during the during the middle of it, um, but just pop your questions in the in the chat, and um, and we'll take them from there. <clears throat> the session is being recorded, and so we'll have this in our 2023 uh, CMA Day Challenge Facebook page. So it'll be right there and it'll also be emailed out to you. Uh, if you need access to that page, please ask the loan officer that invited you. So speaking of the loan officers that are involved, we've got Anne-Marie Edmer. I, <laughs> wow, I can't speak this morning, can I? Sorry about that, Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie Edwards out of Massachusetts, Dixie Sanders out of Texas, Drew Ebner out of Ohio, <clears throat> Elizabeth Smith out of Florida, Heath Goodrich out of South Carolina, it was his birthday today or yesterday, so he probably won't be on today. I know he's on vacation. Uh, Josh Blair out of New Jersey, uh, Lou Graham out of Colorado, Scott Smith out of Utah, Sean Herrero out of California, Steve Calabrese out of Florida, and then Susan Dunphy on my team here in Salem. Uh, and now I'm honored to be able to introduce Laura Jalot. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. <laughs> you want me to just go forward for it? Just move it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, well, I am Laura Gillette, and I have a team here in, in Oregon. Um, we serve the Willamette Valley area here in Oregon. Um, our team is about, about 35 folks um, on our team, and um, we close between like 450 to 550 homes a year. And we've been doing this since 1992. And so it's been a few years doing this, and we're pretty much all database, database driven and relationship real estate is how we do our business. So um, our town is a smaller town. Our town's like less than 20,000 people. I think it's 18,800 people as of the last count in our town. Um, and we do like over 300 transactions in that zip code. Um, and so we do that basically by working our database. And I was going to go a little bit over that with you guys. And um, so you know, database is super important. Um, they, you know, there used to be the old golden rule about 10% of your database would turn over either in repeat business um, or referrals uh, to you. And that, you know, this last probably, I don't know, 10, 10, five, seven years or so, um, that golden rule has been um, chipped away. And experts are saying that that's down to 8%. And I'm going to say it's probably even closer to 6%. And that's because all the disruptors out there that are getting between us and our client. Um, you know, I was just funny today. I got an email from effective agent saying, hey, you, you didn't pay us a referral on this, this, this part person. And I looked at it, it was one of our old clients. I'm like, well, this is one of my old clients. They said, well, you didn't dispute it in seven days. So you're going to have to pay us a referral on that. I was like, oh, great. So, you know, it happened there. You know, luckily they referred him to us, but Again, I don't think he came, he stopped in the office and said, hey, we're ready to sell our property. So it wasn't anything to do with effective agent, but unfortunately he signed into that on, on online. And those are the disruptors that are trying to get between us and our database on that. It was my fault for not looking at it to dispute it earlier. I just didn't see it come through. Um, so anyhow, so what I want to talk a little bit today about, you know, what do we need to do to fix that? And one of the things you could do is grow your database because you know it's just math. If you if it went from ten percent to six percent, then you just need to grow your database by four percent, and you get the same amount of sales. Or if you wanted to double down and do more sales, then you know definitely grow your database more than that four percent. And so that's one way to keep keep your um, business going strong. And then the other thing is to be a little bit more intentional with your database, add more value, add more touches or do both. And that's what our team does is we work, focus on doing both. Um, so we feel like every um, agent really needs to have five databases. Um, and this is kind of how we run our team on here. We have uh, one database, which is our past clients and sphere of influence. Um, so that's our main database. And, and that's the database that has, you know, about the 8% return on that database. Um, and, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about what we do on that one. And then the other one is like an exchange database. An exchange database is people that are not ready yet, people that maybe 
um, somebody referred a neighbor or brought someone to an event, um, there's somebody that hasn't quite raised their hand yet, has any real estate needs, um, but they're a met and there's somebody that we want to build into our SOI. So exchange database is our second database. And then social media. So our uh, Facebook, our, our Instagram, our, our YouTube, all those, those items, anybody that's on there, we treat that like a database. Um, so we have our, our one for our company under our team name that's got about on almost probably 7,000 people in that one. And then our personal ones that we have, and we all treat that like, like a database because those are all friends and family and people that we touch. And we have strategies around that. And then um, our CRM is another database. That's our fourth database. And that's where all the internet leads go to. And when people raise their hand about buying or selling. And so we, we work that database and then our agent to agent referral database. So that would be like you guys, people that you have moving to Oregon that we would love to be your referral partner out here in Oregon. And, um, and so that's the fifth database that we um, nurture. Um, and so there is a formula um, that we use. And I was gonna tell you guys what the formula is. So our, our database with, especially with our past client SOI, um, our exchanges um, and the people that aren't ready to buy yet, but are future in the, in the future ready to purchase something. Um, those guys are um, four calls a year. So we call two times a year um, for pie, and then we'll call two more times a year, either asking for business, letting them know we have a goal script, um, something else during the year that we call them. So we do a pumpkin pie and we do a um, Thanksgiving or a apple pie in July, which is this week. Actually, we're doing pies this week because the 4th of July holiday falls kind of funky this year. Um, and so uh, those are our, our value adds when we call for our pies. So touching them once a quarter is great by phone calls. And then the other one would be four, four times a year by snail mail. And um, so that would be um, four ways to touch them during the year, um, giving them statistics, giving them what's going on, what's happened in the market so far, all that great stuff. And then um, the other way would be an event. Um, so we do multiple events, but there's a couple events that we do invite all of our database to, and I will share, share those with you and what we do with those. And then, uh, then we do, once a month, we do a, a, a newsletter and our newsletter is our main way that we contact our folks and we put everything in that newsletter of what events we have coming up what items of value that we're giving away anything that we have we try to then put through that to get that in there so um that's our four areas on that so let me um let me share a screen here with you real quick oh i might not be able to share a screen i might be disabled yeah enable me wall should, you should be good now okay perfect So oops. this year's, um, I wanted to show you kind of how we work our events a little bit in our area. And so these were our 2022 events um, for last year. And um, the green events are ones that are just for our clients and our community that we put on all by ourselves that we don't ask anybody to help us with. And, um, and then the orange events are ones that we we, we co-do one of those. We co those events with other um, organizations, and I'll go over that. And the teal are just some team events that we do here that um, more team, um, not so much. Um, it's a smaller event. Um, so every year for New Year's, New Year's Day or New Year's Eve, we have an open house at our office. Um, and I'll tell you this kind of strategy behind how we do these. So at the open house at the office or anything that we're gonna do. So this one would be a one, we have um, some light appetizers, we serve some mimosas, we have orange juice and, and pop and water and everything else there. And we open the office for like three hours. We, we invite our, our, we invite all five databases to come. So we invite everyone to just stop by the office. We're gonna be open, uh, New Year's Day open house, come in and see us. They come in, there's a picture opportunity where they can take a picture with uh, something special with whatever the year is, 2023. We had a, a backdrop, they can come and get their photo done. Um, then we, when they come in, they, we also have a drawing. So we give away something. I think this year we had a Traeger barbecue. Um, some of the times we have the bigger 
um, items like that trigger barbecue will that's our spring giveaway and we use it for our events for all of our events until the spring so we don't have to get different um, items that we give away during those uh, events so in the app so we invite everyone down um, we email them, we text them, we put them on our social media, we say, come down. The, th the only thing that can happen with these kind of events sometimes is like, I don't ever know how much food to get, <laughs> but we seem to view just fine. Like if we run out of food towards the end, it's not that big a deal. They're not really coming for the food anyhow. We do like charcuterie boards and just like um, finger foods and stuff for that. Um, but for those people coming into that New Year's event, and I could show you a little bit more on that, they fill out that half page form which gives us their name their address their phone number and then ask them some questions at the bottom if they you know if they're thinking about purchasing this year if they're thinking about selling or if they'd like a market analysis if they'd like to tell one of our classes if they'd like to be on our newsletter so right from that event we'll have you know probably 20 to 25 immediate pieces of business that we can start into following up with those folks. And again, getting face to face, belly to belly with your clients, your your sphere, your people, it really does cement that relationship that if one of those disruptors try to get between you and them, they're going to they're going to push back and and call you. They are not going to use that person on there. I'll skip past these two events because this are kind of one offs. But anytime there's like we do the Northwest Horse Expo that's at the fairgrounds. We do the Albany Home Show. Um, so, and what those are there is that that is somebody else's event, Northwest Horse Show puts that on, but we have a booth there. Um, we normally will give away some tickets prior to the event on the giveaway on the tickets. We have, um, we have them fill out a Google form online and then we do a drawing for the tickets to go to the horse event on there. And then we have something at the horse event. I think there we still have the trigger barbecue that we were giving away and they sign up for that at, the, at that. And again, right from that event, we can go right in. It adds people to our database because people are filling out that form and it tells us they raise their hands if they have any real estate needs for those. The nice thing about these types of events is that all five databases, well, not agent to agent, I don't invite agents to come, but all the rest of four databases, I invite everyone to come to these events. You can mass do everyone. We're gonna be at the Horse Expo. We're, we're located in a quarter booth, stop by, we're serving some cake. Let us know that you're a VIP client and we've got something special behind the booth for you. And so like last year at the horse event, we had like a little um, cell phone bags and we had a koozie and a pin and a flashlight and some some swag in a bag. And if they came and said they were a VIP from getting the newsletter or the invite, then we give them a little something extra. Um, so one, it let us know that these are people that are on our list that we can, you know, um, make sure they feel special, make sure they feel important at the booth. And so that's what we do on those. And those are good ways to invite everyone in your database. Um, and then the, these ones here that are in green are smaller events like Ladies Mojito Night is just like uh, like 50 to 100 ladies that we invite. Um, this one is one that we host at our house. It's on the back patio. Um, and it's kind of the movers and shakers in town, people that love networking, people that are HR, people that are involved in the community are people that are invited to this one. So it's not a mass to the database. It's more a specific group private Facebook group that we invite people, but we also let them know they can bring a friend. So that's how these events grow and how we add to our databases, let them know they can bring a friend to that. Same thing with movie theaters. I mean, the movie theater type is really nice because it has a limited amount of people. And when we have something like a movie night, we will first send it out to our our um, past clients or we call them forever clients in our SOI. We'll send it out to that and see how many RSVPs we get. And then we'll send it up to our exchange database and then we'll send it out to all the next database. We just keep layering it in, um, starting with the warmest people to fill out the, form, the theater and then moving on out. And then I, on the theater things, I normally book it about one and a half times the seats. Um, and it always makes me nervous because I think, oh my gosh, what if everyone comes and I don't have enough seats for everybody? But it never happens. Every time we still have extra seats. So about one and a half time to book the theater seems to be a good, a good spot on that. Uh, we do a few parades and on how we've we capture on parades now is that we have a QR code on our side of our float and it says if you uh, click the QR code and you fill out the Google form that you'll be entered into a drawing um, and then we give something away and it's normally our summer drawing so this year we're giving away a big cooler on wheels and so um, right from the parade we got immediate you know like 120 people that registered on that I will let you know in the past when we didn't have a QR code or we didn't have any way for them to register for anything, there was really no business we got off of those, those parades. And we just went through and it was great for name recognition and getting our name out there, but we didn't get any data. 
So appraised now add data to our, our, um, our, our database, which is great. Um, I was gonna see if there was anything else in here. Some golf tournaments we do. So uh, we give away, we have two bags. We have like a golf bag that's a beaver bag and a Oregon deck bag. And we have a sign up for that. We use that for all summer long for all of our tournaments. At the end, we'll do a drawing for that. Um, for the, those bags. And so that's a good way to get people to sign in. Again, a good way to see face-to-face -face when you're sponsoring a whole. Um, we don't really invite our database to that because it's people have already signed up for the tournaments on those. And then our apple pie days, which I can go into deep, deeply on that if you guys want to. Um, oh, I was trying to think what else we got, more golf tournaments. Sometimes things pop up like Matt Stilwell. Um, he's a friend of the KRKT, KRKT is a friend of ours. So Matt came in to town and said, hey, I'm in between gigs. I would love to play a backyard, um, like barbecue, something for somebody. And we said, so they called us and gave us like two days. We're like, sure, we'll do it. And so we had um, Matt come in and play. And then the next year we knew he was coming through. So we had it at Tallman's and it worked out great there. It's just, it, it happens really close to our other big events. So it's, it's not something we normally would plan on, but if there's an opportunity to do something, we'll jump on it on those. Uh, our Pork and Tunes is our big Klein event that's coming up here now July 22nd. Um, and that's where we invite all of our past clients and our sphere of influence and our exchange database. And we'll put it in our newsletter um, and invite people to come. And we have that function um, on our property. We have like eight acres. It's pretty, it's like a, an event that, that's for like 600 people, but only costs us like $6,000 and that includes the band and everything. We don't have any vendors or anybody that helps co-sponsor those. We just do those on our own, um, and, but we invite all of our, our um, vendors to come and enjoy the festival with us or, and, and I'll show you a little bit more what that looks like. Um, but anyhow, just wanna let you know, there's just a couple different ways to do this. If you said, hey, I'm fairly new and I wanna do my first event, I would definitely say if you went something to like a biz expo or something to that net, that nature, your your booth cost is only going to be a couple hundred dollars. It could be higher in some areas. And you can get there and you can invite all your family, your friends, your past clients, anybody in your um, your CRM and ask them to come and see you at that event. And it's it's scalable because it doesn't matter if you have 10 people come through, if you have 10,000 people come through, they can all come see you at those events, uh, which is great. Um, okay, let me move on here. Well, how much time do I have? You have as much time as you want. So we go until 9.30. Um, okay. Probably till, I mean, 9.15, 9.20, and we can okay. do some questions. I don't have my phone here with me. You'll just have to cut me off. When okay. Ready. Okay. Um, so when we plan our year out, last year, because last year was the first year that COVID got over with, we just went hog wild with our events. And it, at the end of the year, we said, hey, this it was a little bit, that was too much. That was too much for us to be involved in all that. So 2023, I said, let's just dial it back a little bit. Let's figure out what we want to be involved in. Like these are our best events for the year. And you'll get to look at them right here. You take a screenshot of it or whatever. Um, and then these are the best events. But And if we want to do other ones, then we'll let the agents kind of host those and, and take on those other events on there because it, too much on our staffing and on David and I and Lori and, and the admin to get everything ready and done for this. Because the agents basically just have to show up at the event. They don't have to set up or anything. So we dialed it back to these events um, for this coming year. And I will let you know, if, of course, someone's like, uh, we're doing movie night at the park. We wanted to buy this big screen and you know, will you help us with this? And we're like, okay, I will do that. <laughs> we'll do this. So we ended up being involved in more events. It's hard saying no to people and you want to make fun, fun things happen. Um, but you can look through those and see those. Um, and this is how we kind of track things on the back end. Uh, this was in 2022. So, um, so we'll see here, we have, you can kind of see how many sheets we picked up. So let's just say here, I'll pick a bigger one. Um, apple pie, <laughs> there was 717 entries. There were 65 people that wanted market analysis on that one. 93 people wanted to be on the newsletter. That one may not have added any buyer needs. Um, I'll let you know National Night Out. That's a good one. That's happened on August 1st. You guys all probably have National Night Out in your community. It's put on by the fire department or the police department. So just check in with them and see if they're going to have it. It doesn't cost anything for the booth. It's free. We give away free otter pops. We give away a basket full of um, items um, for the drawing. And this one here, you can see here, there are 134 people that signed up to win. There were six CMAs. There were 25 uh, buyer needs on there. So a lot more buyer needs at some of these, some of these um, 
things that we go to. And we just kind of track this year over year. We can kind of look and see, you know, what we've had, um, what it looks like. Um, you can see here, pumpkin pie here is really good for us. You know, we had a thousand pies that we gave away, 1,030, but there were 77 CMAs um, requested from that and 76 referrals. So it was, you know, it's, it's good for us to be able to do these just to keep in front of our clients and it helps us get, get leads to go follow up on and, and do things with our, with our team. Um, and it's good keeping track. So, and let me show you what it looks like here. This is kind of how we plan out our year. We have checklists for every event. So, and the main thing with the checklist with every event is um, go over the checklist a couple months prior to the event you know, and then as it goes up, go over the checklist. And then after the event, the most important thing is to go back over the checklist and realize on there what you didn't need or what you did need was on the checklist. That's the only way to keep your sanity if you're doing events. And that works out really nice to be able to do that. This, this is kind of showing you how we do our apple pie. So one thing with our pie that's a little bit different is that um, we always, um, in our Lebanon branch of our office, we serve um, lunch. So um, on Thursday, we'll be serving hot dogs and chips and water. And we'll tell our database to stop in and have a hot dog with us. If you serve the Nathan, Nathan's hot dogs, they'll stay. If they serve the crappy old hot dogs, they won't even want to eat them. So eat the, get the better, the better hot dogs. Uh, but we do the hot dogs that makes them stay and eat and, and chit chat. They're just not coming for the pie. Remember, they're coming for the relationship. The pie costs like six bucks. So it, it's easy for them to go get a pie. It's a lot less um, a lot less work than coming by our office to get grab a pie for the holidays, but that so relationship is what they want. So make certain you keep that in mind when you're doing pies. Um, and then we have all of our systems that go with pies. So um, and I won't go deep in this, but we have a pie script. Um, we you know go through and 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 talk to them about. Um, about sending us referrals, you can whip us a referral between now and Pi Day, we can throw in some whipped cream. They all pretty much know the routine. We now have a Google form right here that they click on. Um, if they say yes to Pi, and then they fill it out. What I've realized when we are doing this, and this is what the Google form looks like, is that when you're on the phone with them, there's a lot less chance you're going to ask them for a referral or you feel like you're bugging them or they're, they're swamped that they need to go and they don't want to ask, answer the questions. But if we say, hey, we're going to fill it, send you a Google form and fill it out, then that reserves your pie. Then they will fill this out if they have a referral or if they'd like to know what their property is worth or if they'd like to attend one of our classes. And this gives us immediate information. So this was I think, last year's pie and this was 68 CMAs. Uh, 29 had real estate needs, 14 of them had referrals, 21 of them wanted to go to career night, 16 wanted to go to builders class, 15 wanted to go home buyer class, 11 seller class. So we can kind of see where things are and we can label all these in the system. So when we have our home buyer class, we can invite these 15 people to come to the class um, or to career night or something to that nature. Uh, or if they want to see a May, we can get those scheduled up and get those going right away. And that helps again keep us busy with those. And that's more pie count for for last year for pie. And this is our pork and tunes. So one, one good thing we do at every event, we like when pork and tunes ends um, this year, we'll put out the save the date for next year. So it's consistent. It's always the third um, Saturday each year. And we put it out there so that way everyone can put it on their calendars for the next year out um, to come to the event. Um, and like dinner and stuff, we used to do potluck on dinner and now, um, now we, when COVID hit, we went over and did like, uh, we did coleslaw and baked beans and, and um, we do just do um, pork butts on the barbecue. And, um, and that works out really good. It can feed a lot of people. It doesn't cost a lot of money for the food. Um, we're bringing back now, uh, last year we brought back, they could potluck desserts and that seemed to be a big hit. Um, I can show you a little bit more on this. So they bring their own chair. It's in the yard. We have a trailer set up for the band. <laughs> it's nothing super fancy. Um, but probably one of the things I should say that we did is that our, we have an RSVP now with the Google Forms that tells us up before the event how many people have real estate needs. And then we have a little booth set up and people can sign up for, we do uh, door prizes in the break at the band. And we normally have some tickets to give away for like Jamboree and some of the other items. And so people will sign up right there. So just from the booth, we had 24 CMAs. Uh, people request CMAs and 17 people at the booth told us they had buyer um, needs on there. So again, when we didn't have the booth, people would come. Yes, we got business from it, but 
we didn't have anybody to call afterwards. People, you know, occasionally would come and say, Hey, you know, we're thinking of selling. And like three days later, I'd be like, Oh man, who said that? I can't even remember. I talked to so many people that night. So this at least gives us a system on how to process those things. Um, and then also with this is like, put your, um, your, your agenda out a few different places and then you'll have everyone asking you what, what's going on. It's just nice having those out there. We always do a photo booth at our, at our events. It's way better than this now. This is from a few years back, um, but we do our photo booths. That helps you get it out there on social media, lets people know that they're associated with you, that they love you, that they want to refer you. Um, we bought an old tractor that makes ice cream. Um, we actually just used that at an open house yesterday and got a lot of people through the open house giving away free ice cream at the open house. So that worked out great. Um, but we also did like um, end of the year ice cream social for the kids and gave away, our, we um, had the giveaway there being a hoverboard and lots of people signed up for the hoverboard. So that made it nice. Not only could give ice cream, but we also then could get people to add to our database. So it's all about adding to the database and getting people in front of people. We play poker at it, lots of kids games, real kid friendly. And then this is the example of the Google form. And basically one Google form is just, we just change out some of the photos. It's basically the same Google form for every event. Um, nothing, because that way it helps us tag everything in there. I'm gonna go past this one real quick. I'll do that. Um, so this is where I'm talking about after the event, it's super important to say suggestions for a better 2023 event. And we did that like a couple of days after the event because you're not gonna remember the next year what you're supposed to do. And if you could look at this, I mean, this is, this is our team, but this is everyone responding back of things that, that they seen from their angle that could have been better. And that's how you make your, your, your events better every time is to be able to do this because you will not remember. I don't even know what's on here. So we're going to, have to go through and read all this and get ready for the next year. Um, but it's super important to have that. And then uh, this is kind of a little background of what, what our um, event checklist looks like. Anything down from, you know, how many bags of apples to get to, you know, how many serving spoons, everything. We just try to get everything out. So it's kind of a no brainer. If you're having a bad day, you just go get things and check it off the list. Um, now we put it on the Google Keep, which makes it kind of nice because uh, Google Keep is free is with Google, um, but anybody can work on that list. So if someone's out and they're like, oh yeah, we forgot to pick up marshmallows or chocolate bars or whatever it is, they could grab those things and mark it off the list and no one's duplicating that. So Google Keep is really easy for that. And this just goes over a little bit, having a, a, a we just, just got this Google Earth and just put in here where everything is at the event. So if you have a new person on the team or someone coming, they can kind of see the layout of how things are. And then one of our clients is a surveyor. So he did the parking on the pasture, which is nice. And then anything you could have, if you do not have a large team, but you have people, we, I mean, we invite family come and help at this event. Their kids come and help at this event. Um, anybody that's gonna help and be a volunteer, we get them a, a Pork and Tunes, Tunes t-shirt, which is a different color. And everyone signs up for on the volunteer plan what their, what their duties are. Um, I try to remind our team, this is not a, not a party for us. This is a party for our clients who are there to serve the whole entire time. So this is where we're picking up plates and we're doing what we're doing. We're taking out the garbage, we're, we're being social. It's all about the clients. It's trying to make them feel special. So that's that's the whole thing of the event. We can have our own party later. <laughs> but again, this is over the years, it's just grown. And we've done this for almost like two decades now. So it didn't start out this big. It was just very small at the very beginning. And I see if I keep going through this. Um, at the July um, apple pie, we give out the, the notices of, about pork and tunes. We give them a flyer, they put on the fridge for that. This is the open house. Okay, how are we doing on time now? I'm really talking fast, I'm trying to get a lot in. <laughs> you're getting a ton in and, and you're doing great. Okay, um, if you guys like, I could stop it for questions anytime on here. I will say one more thing about this type of thing is, and I'm, and I'm sorry if I've been on this before and I've talked about this, but this is like super important. So this is an example of what happens to a lot of us agents. So the Boys and Girls Club is putting on Brewfest. It's an event for them to raise money for the Boys and Girls Club. And they're having it downtown. And they're like, hey, Laura, could you really, we're really struggling with this event. Can you help us sponsor the stage? And so we can get some, um, some vendors in here or some musicians in here. And I said, well, how much does it cost us? sponsor the stage and they're like 
I think it was like 2000. I was like, ah, and then you'll get your banner up on the stage. I'm thinking to myself, I don't know, putting a banner up on anything doesn't get me any business. I mean, it's great that they see my name there and everything. And I want to see my name there other than somebody else's name, but I'm like, okay, we'll consider being um, the sponsor of that, but um, we would like to have a booth at your event. And they said, well, you don't really sell beer and you don't sell food. So I don't know, I, you know, I don't know if you really fit in at our event. And I said, I don't care, put me at the very end, put us anywhere, I don't care. We just wanna be able to be there and, and have a presence. And they said, okay, that's fine. So with the sponsorship package, I got VIP tickets and everything's that nature, which we were able to put online as a drawing and people filled out the form and we were able to give away the, all our VIP tickets, which it sold out. And then we told everyone we were doing this growler at our booth to come by our booth and sign up for the growler. Um, and then we sent it out to all four databases, letting everyone know we're gonna be there. It helps, helps the Boys and Girls Club to get more ticket sales. We tell everyone about the event, what time is gonna be there. They have to pay to get in. And we give them all the information to come by our booth and sign up for this. And also we'll have something special for them behind the booth, which is probably a drink ticket if they came and um, let us know their VIP. And so, with that, from that last event they had, it was 431 people entered, 92 people, 92 new people on our newsletter that opted in. We had 29 people say they wanted CMAs and 10 buyers. So again, it, you could easily spend $2,000 on Zillow leads and get not much, like two leads. Like it could be not very many leads at all. And they're probably giving those two leads to you and somebody else. This here is $2,000, helps the community it helps our kids and it get, gave me 431 people to add to our database and 90 people opted in to get the newsletter. And then that, you know, 30 pieces of business or 40 pieces of business from that. So just think about ways we use these events is like our advertising dollars. And that's what we're using to generate business. And we're not paying for, you know, buying any leads online or not using uh, a big Zillow spend or anything to that nature. So it's just another way to look at for advertising. More punk and pie. Okay, so I'm going to just ask, see if you guys have any questions. It's a lot. So there was one question here. Um, how do you make your social media into a database? How do you get their email? Okay, so I would say on our social media that our main thing is that we know we can get in front of those folks. So. Um, we don't so much mail them or email them. All we're doing is when we're, when we're doing things on social media, we're being intentional that we're trying to get engagement and trying to get them to connect with our team. So anytime we're on there, that's what we're trying to do. Let me see here if I can show you an example of something here. Um, see if I have it on this slideshow. I'll give you an example of one. Okay. Okay, here's an example. Okay, so here's an example of um, the Strawberry Festival giveaway. So we have a little Strawberry Festival in town. We bought six tickets. Actually, I think we got this with our sponsorship. Six tickets, which is 10 bucks a ticket. It's not that expensive, 60 bucks. And we get, threw in a couple ride bracelets. Um, and we said, um, you know, fill out this little Google form. It's gonna have a Google form like this. If you'd like to be entered in and win these tickets. So from that, from on our Facebook, we had uh, 131 people said they might wanna purchase a home. Oh, that's something else I didn't tell you about. Uh, 40 people said, yes, they do wanna purchase a home. 11 people said they're curious what their home is worth. Um, and I don't, this might've been a little misprint. I think 30 to 50 people had, were curious about a CMA. I can't remember, that might be a misprint on there. But this only was out for six days and we closed it down like within two days but it got you know, almost 20,000 impressions and um, 4,000 post engagements. So our main thing is that we just want to make certain when we're giving this out there that we are connecting with our database and adding more people to our, our Facebook group or our Gillette home team. Um, and this is similar, we do race tickets. And so, and we do them every weekend because we have some box seats and we give those away every time. And the nice thing about those is that it gets a ton of activity and gets people interacting with our team. And it tells us when they want real estate needs. There's a form they fill out and they can just tell us they want real estate needs. So we try to on this, try to give them um, a couple things uh, that are like data information um, about the market, new listings, price reductions, um, and then some kind of item of value like a giveaway 
or something that we're telling them what's happening in the community, like come down and have free ice cream with us. That's how we use that database. Just like we're emailing to our database, we use our social media platforms just like a database. We just touch them through posts on there, which makes it real good. Good question. We've got another question here. This is from one of the lender partners here. Where do you like your lending partners to fit into these more specifics besides the event you consider partner events? Yeah, so we don't, we haven't done much with um, having a co-sponsor or anything of that nature, but I know there's many agents out there that are doing events at a high level that like my event costs 6,000, like they have six partners that pay a six to pay a thousand dollars and they co-sponsor the event and they don't pay anything for the event. I know they do that all the time and it works just great for them. It's just not something, you know, we do everything pretty inexpensively and we just try to do it on, on our own dime. And then we want all of our partners to come and enjoy the event and to be there, but not so much co-branding with anybody or putting anything out that way. And it probably has something to do with, you know, I don't know, 10 years ago, there was a, a, our company and Keller Williams had a co-branding um, issue and not with me personally, but with our thing. And it, the, the red tape that had to go through with that was, it was hard for us to, to deal with it because I'm like, I don't even want to be nothing involved in that again. But they've changed some rules and there's some things that are different now, but um, it was a, not a good experience for them to go through. So I've just stayed clear of it. So yeah, that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Um, another one here at open houses that your yes. agents are doing, do you use QR codes and Google forms there as well? We do. So let me just see if I can get into my social media here real fast. Um, all kinds of stuff here open. So one thing that we're doing as a tour of homes, we do that once a month and they fill out a Google form for that. Um, which is good. And we're able to get people through on that. Um, so this was yesterday. We did the ice cream social at one of the open houses. That worked out really nice. And we have an old car. We put out a car show, um, which is branded. We try to brand everything. Let me just look here real quick and see if I can find the, the open house tour of homes. Let me just put it in here real quick. This might be down here a little ways. Tour of homes. Here's an example. So here's our tour of homes. This was from March. Um, see if anything's still up on here. Um, if this is an older one, so it's not, not saved here, but this, yes, there is something they can click into. We tried it through Eventbrite because you could ask questions on Eventbrite and do it through there, but trying to get the data off the back end was a little bit clunky for us. So we just went back to a Google form. And if they sign up on the Google form, um, it, we give them a double entry um, to go. So when you when they go to the event, they get to sign up for an entry for going. And then when they fill up the Google form, they get another entry. And then we do a drawing for something at the end of the event on the tour of homes. And then we'll do a live drawing with that, with that item. And it doesn't have to be that big. Like sometimes it's just like a branded, you know, hydro flask with our team and a gift certificate to a local restaurant. It's, it's nothing super big on that. But anybody can go to Gillette Home Team and you can R&D anything you want off of here. If there's anything on here that you think that works, let's just see how this one here's got. Oh, here's Turf Homes coming up here. I have more details to come. Joy, that's already not too far away. I can't believe how fast this summer's gone on here. Um, but this gives you an idea of the, of the, the, the giveaways that we're doing on here. You can look on here and see, see any of these ones that are coming through. And this has probably got a little bit too much Canva on here for me. I liked having more raw stuff, but sometimes um, sometimes it's, we just get a lot of people that want to see their listings on there because they make changes. But this is one of the, um, the um, golf tournament things that, that we sponsor. And, and you can see on here with the little clipboards with the signups, and those are the two bags that we have. Um, so again, just trying to, trying to get information, trying to get data in on that, but oh yeah, here's a good idea. So this one here was the, so from here, they, they click this speedway. It takes them in, oh, it's been closed. It takes them right into the Google Sheets. That's how they sign up for it. 
but again, lots of engagement, 77 comments, 77 shares wasn't, and we don't, and we only run them a few days before the event. So we don't let it run for a really long time, just because sometimes we just have too many things going on at once. This is the, the downtown association with the, with the um, theater that they're doing outside. I was trying to see if they had another one. Okay, what other questions do you guys have? Um, curious how many pies, um, curious how you do your pies. Okay. I do them for clients for Thanksgiving. Do you expand beyond clients or just VIPs? Do you serve food in November too, or just July? Nope, we, we do serve food in November. So let me go to my November one real quick here. Uh, so we do we do the pumpkin pies from the from um, Costco, and um, again we do the Google form. Um, we really only do it to our past clients, sphere of influence, and our raving fans. So if you've sent us a referral, then you get tagged as a raving fan, and you'll get offered pie every year if you're a client. Um, and so those are the only ones we offer these two. We don't put on social media. They have to have a call. They have to say, yes, they want pie. They have to fill out the form or we fill the form out for them um, with that. And then we do a chili cook-off. So we, um, everyone on the team uh, brings their favorite chili recipe and we uh, put it out and the clients taste the chili and um, they vote and we have a chili winner. And that's how we are able to do this for, um, for a chili cook-off for the for our clients, which is great, and they'll come and eat chili. Um, and if it's raining, we've um, put them. We uh, last year it was raining, so we put them inside the building, um, which was fine also to do that. But if it's a nice day, we'll throw out some fire pits and and do it outside. On that, I need to see just some more more folks coming and getting their pies and things. And we do leave it open. Um, from eight to six is pie pickup. So it's able to get everybody. We have um, started moving pie day to this was a little, this was a while back. We moved pie day two days before, um, before the holiday or, or before the weekend. Um, so that way, if people do forget their pies, um, then they can pick them up the next day at the office and they have till noon. Then afternoon, we put it on social media. Uh, if they fill out a Google form, they can come down and get a free pie. And so it's just one other way to gather some more data for people if we have extra pies to give away. We also give pies to the soup kitchen, to the fire department and the police department. Um, but if there's, it seems like always there's like 10%, like people forget, like 10% of people forget. Um, so if we order 900 pies, that's 90 pies that we normally have left over. Um, and so we have to find, find homes for those pies and we just do it the next day. So we used to do it on Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, and then we got left with a lot of extra pies for Thanksgiving and everyone was off for the holiday. So now we do it two days before and it works out way better. And we're yeah, able yeah. to collect more data on social media, which is good. So I think one of the takeaways here, I mean, that, that I'm getting, you know, as we, as we listened to Spring Benson a couple of weeks ago, Spring spoke about um, really monitoring and tracking everything. Yeah. And that's what I love that you're doing here. I mean, you, you not only do a pie, but then you're tracking how many pies you're tracking, how many sheets are coming back and you're asking all the right questions to be able to gather all of the data. Uh, I think that's one area that, that I see a lot of people they're not doing. Uh, so therefore it's kind of like that, uh, kind of the analogy that you gave of the boys and girls club, yeah, great. I spent $2,000 and I get my name up on a billboard there um, on their stage, but that doesn't do any good. Um, you know, really tracking that data. Spring also said that, uh, I don't know if you've heard the statistic or not, but there's 125 million leads that are sold every year right now. So, so really those leads are in about five different realtors databases at any given time. Um, so I'm curious to know how many people you have in your past client database and your exchange database and your social media, CRM, how yep. many people do you have in those databases? Okay. So remember, I've been in the business for over 30 years and, and yep. I've been doing database since the very beginning. So in our, like our local people that are in town 
or haven't moved out of the area that have purchased properties with us and that are, are raving fans is about 3,000. So, and out of 3,000, about 1,000 people will get pies. So one third of that will come get pies. Out of our CRM, which those 3,000 are in, our CRM is about 61,000 right now. And that 61,000 is probably, I'm gonna say a good 20% of probably like, you know, Donald Duck and FU and all those good guys <laughs> that are still in our database that need to be deleted out. Um, and then some of it's a mess because we've transferred databases a couple of times that we got double entries and some things happened on that. So that's a little bit of a mess on there. Um, and so we have that database and we will email out to that database. And then we have about, I don't know, probably like 10, maybe 11, 12,000 people who have opted into our newsletter that we send a newsletter to each month. So we don't send you a newsletter. If you came and you fill up one of these enter to win forms and you say, no, you don't want to receive a newsletter. We will not send you a newsletter because I don't want to be spammed out. I don't want to be, get high spam rates. So I only send it to people that say, yes, they want the newsletter. Um, and so that's our newsletter. And I would say that's more of like our exchange database, but it also has a mixture in there of our past clients that are in there. And then um, our social media is, you know, it's like 6.7, you know, like almost six or 7,000 and on our social media, on our Jalot home team page. Um, and we're always trying to add to that and, and build that. And then um, my personal page luckily just got hacked not too long ago and I lost it <laughs> and I, I started over again. So I think I'm like around, you know, 2,700 or something friends on that. I was a lot more selective this time when I'm adding people. I only adding people I really know and not a lot of local agents on there just because you know, they're not going to send me business. I'm treating this as a database. So I'm being more selective on folks that I'm, I'm liking. And then we also do a VIP private Facebook group to, for all of our past clients on social media. And that, that private page is a great way for us to be able to let them know that something's coming out like a movie or something um, to watch for that. So they don't miss it in the newsletter or they can go ahead and pre-sign up for things. We do like photos in the park and we do um, pumpkin photos and different photos. And those always seem to sell out first. We want our VIP clients to get those first. So we send those out to the, uh, onto that, that Facebook group, which is a good, good one to get to. Um, and we've been doing a lot more with Google Sheets than this entry form, but I wanted to show you that paper still works. And when they get there, it's just a half sheet. You put it on a footboard, you hand it to them, they'll fill it out. It's, it's super easy peasy. Um, the main thing is definitely have it on a clipboard, definitely hand it to them. Um, we normally have two people in front of our booth, two people behind the booth. We normally serve um, cake or something at the booth, some Costco cake in small pieces, try to do something to draw them in. And then our, what we're giving away, we put out there and just be really friendly, you know, using your cell phones, you know, smiling, looking up, making eye contact, uh, being a great resource, you know, making them feel important. Those are all good things to do. If you're sitting at your booth, you know, on a chair, we don't, we don't allow any chairs in our booth. <laughs> so if you're sitting at the chair, looking at your cell phone, people are walking by, you're not going to get anybody signing up for nothing. So you've really got to interact and be be proactive. And the nice thing about it, because we've been keeping stats all this time, is that we try to always beat what last year's was. So if we knew last year at the Biz Expo, we got 300 and it's like, okay, let's get 320. You know, like we're always trying to beat our numbers. So it's kind of nice having a little something to see if you're winning or, or losing something. Although COVID kind of messed some things up, but we're getting back on track. You know, one, one thing I want to, um, I want to counsel. So <clears throat> Again, I mean, Laura has been doing this now for 30 years and she did it right. I mean, she, it, it just like she said, she's, you, you started with your database early on. Yeah. A lot of people, they don't even have a database and they've been in the business 10, 15 years. And so it's, it's really databasing. Um, I, I'm sure that you feel kind of like I felt uh, in 2006, there were 50 loan originators. We went to Cancun or Cabo. And we flew Robert Kiyosaki in, Douglas Andrews, and and then Rick Edelman, financial planner, um, an insurance guy, and then and then Robert Kiyosaki. You guys know him, property guy. So we flew him in, and and we were really looking at ways to be able to take equity and from people's homes and to be able to create massive wealth through it. So we're counseling with them, and I remember John Bell was one guy that got up and and made a presentation, and John Bell went through his presentation. He's an originator. I forget even where he was. 
And literally, we were all just stunned. We, we were just, uh, we, we felt like, oh, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. Let's just send all of our referrals to you and you just take care of them because we're not worthy. And then my friend got up and he made a presentation, <clears throat> uh, Jim McQuig. And Jim said, I've got a presentation too that I go through with clients. I use a yellow pad and I use a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> and he even said, I don't use one of the calculators that you guys have, one of the fancy HPs. I use a $2.99 calculator I bought from Staples. And so um, so the thing is, is, is just make a decision to start. You know, as we heard from Todd Duncan last week, Todd talked about how our, our industry is moving to a more client-centric business. I mean, you know, you've got the Zillows, you've got the Amazons, you've got all these people that want our business. And it's moving more client centric for the people that, that we work with and that we that we grow that sphere that we grow. And so so just make a decision to move forward. Now, one question here um, is, you know, and then I'll answer it. And then if you can answer it, Laura, but, yeah. um, you know, if, if you're a, a realtor and you don't have a big team in that, how do you get started? And I'll tell you that I I did a movie. Um, and I did uh, the movie over at uh, oh Lancaster Mall here in town. So we had 374 seats. And I mean, I hired, I, I needed a lot of people to help put this event on. And so I just, I went to a, a uh, uh, what do you call them? The, where you hire part-time help, those uh, agencies. And I just, agency. yeah, temp agency. And, and I hired four people <laughs> that would be there. Um, I told them exactly what I needed and, and they had the right people there. Um, but you even said, I mean, family, friends, um, there's a lot of ways that you can really help build that if you're just a sole practitioner. Is there anything else that you would add to that? Yeah, I mean, definitely the movie is something because all you have, to have is a table and a tablecloth, you know, and you could go get a branded tablecloth if you want it. It's not that not that expensive. And then you just sit there and you greet people as they come in to your thing where we have a one screen movie theater. So everyone comes in is a private event and it's our clients. So it's easy. It may be a little more difficult when you're having people coming in, but you don't know every because they're going to different movies on there. So it would be something a little different. Um, also doing something like, like pies or something to that nature is good because if last year you sold 10 properties, you really only have to give away 10 pies. So it's very scalable. And at the beginning, because you only have 10 pies, you could go deliver them. You know, you could, you could do that for your clients. And as you get larger, that's not possible. Um, so you could make something small like that or going to national night out is something that's very scalable because all you do is go down to Rite Aid or whatever, Walgreens, grab a they have 50% off all their toys right now. You could go put a big basket together, set it out, have some entry forms, invite, you know, tell people you're going to be down there. We give away some free Otter Pops and then ask them to sign up to win the basket. And you can do a drawing at the end of the night for the basket. You know, so those are just things you could do that don't cost a lot of money. And you can invite everyone to those events because it helps the event out to get lots of people and exposure. And you put on your social media. Um, you could do a whole bunch of things. You could do a Facebook Live while you're there. Um, those are just easy, easy ways to get in front of your database and your community. You know, one thing also, um, you know, I've watched your social media over the years and, and one thing that I thought was just absolutely brilliant um, and just quick thinking, I remember, and I don't remember what year it was, 2000, I want to say it might've been at the start of COVID or right before COVID, but um, there was just one time when your team popped on social media and said, Hey, you guys want to wrap your Christmas presents, bring yeah. your presents on down. We have wrapping paper. Um, so it can be just a little simple event like that. <laughs> We're just, just bring your presents down, wrap your wrapping paper. So if you're in a, if you have an office and you have a conference room, go get some wrapping paper during Christmas and have your clients down to do that. Uh, so just really thinking outside the box, it's, it's anything that you can do to get in front of your client. And to be able to get belly to belly with your client, correct? Yeah, definitely. And you know, a lot of times before Christmas, a lot of our agents don't want to cover floors. So I'll take those four days. Um, we do our Christmas things earlier in the month, so it's not that big of a deal for me. And then I'm here anyhow. I'm here covering the floor. Might as well have people, you know, come down and ring their presents down. And I don't even offer to wrap them, and they have to wrap them. But it gives them a place they could bring all their Christmas gifts down and have to wrap them in front of the kids and come and use our tables and our tapes and our paper and. I'm not that great at wrapping, so I don't offer to wrap. I mean, sometimes I help a little bit with tape, but I'm not that great 
I was going to try to see if I could show you guys the um, national night out, but I, I can't see it. But yes, those are anything you can think of an opportunity to get in front of your database. One thing I didn't talk about here, but that works really good too, is that's manageable. I heard, no, that's not it. Yeah, there it is. Um, is that, um, so if our clients send us a referral, like, then we send them a just a quick like thanks a latte card with a coffee as soon as they send the referral and then we invite them to a referral dinner and we have the referral dinner either once a quarter or twice a year depending on things since COVID's gotten a little bit different um and then those are real manageable because if you you know get 50 referrals between now and the last time you had the referral dinner then you would only invite 50 clients to come to dinner then you have them rsvp you may have 20 people rsvp to the event and it's real magical to have a barbecue or to have a catered dinner have something for for those folks and you will realize that if you give to the people that give you referrals many times it's the same people when we had the quarterly events we did that like quarterly like clock like work for like four years the same people were at the same quarterly dinners every quarter they gave us a referral every quarter and those are the folks that you can pour into there's some people in our database that will never send us a referral so i know even one of our questions on our form is you know do you have a referral for us what was a referral we'll give you what cream and so do you refer yourself or you have any friends or family members or do you intend to find us one before the Pi day. And some people won't even mark that box that they intend to find this one because they don't want to commit to anything. They're just not referring people. So, but if you find out who your givers are in your group, those are the people you really want to just stay in con contact with. And those are good. But this is an example of the, um, the, the National Night Out. We just give away free Otter Pops. It's super cheap. It doesn't cost us anything to have our booth there. And then we give away, so right here's the, to the toy basket. Oops. See it there at the bottom right there that we give away. And Again, 225 entries, 46 people, new people to the newsletter, 15 new CMAs, 39 buyer. So National Night Out, which is not around the corner, is coming real soon, is a really good spot to get young families and new buyers coming in. So again, good good spot to get those. Otter Pops are not that expensive. And I will let you know, these ones here, these Otter Pops here were kind of mistake we ordered them on Amazon and they were, they didn't have any color in them, but the parents loved those a lot better. So not having the blue and red and the, the white ones, they, they seem to like those. We are like, oh no, these are not our normal Otter Pops, but it worked out just fine. <laughs> That's cool. Well, any last questions, guys? You gave us so much information, Laura. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm kind of overloaded, um, you guys, sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're awesome, awesome as usual. <laughs> Yeah, I think that looks like it's our last one there. So okay. um, yeah, yeah. any last words of wisdom, Laura? No, if I just say, you know, get out there and make contacts, love on your people, you know, get back to the community. And, you know, it, it, it's a lot funner than spending money out for other leads, other lead source. Just treat it like a database, treat it like a lead gen um, opportunity for you and have fun. Love that. Have fun, track it, and treat it like a business. <laughs> treat it like like a lead source. Um, I I don't know that you can get any better words than that. So, how uh, how do people get in touch with you if you, if they have questions? Um, of course, you can find us on Facebook. It's teamjalot.com. It's two L's and two T in Jalot. That's kind of a funny spelling, but that's the way we spell it. That's how we say it. Um, we're in Lebanon, Oregon. You can look us up anytime. Um, and if you need anything even if it's not in our backyard we can always find you a, a great agent so there's some really good ones in this this state so we can help you find it of course we know a great loan officer walt so it's all good right here right in oregon yep <laughs> Up the road. Perfect. hey thank you so much laura thank you for everybody attending again there will be the recording we'll have the recording in the uh in the facebook page also send you a recording as well laura if you want to do some micro content or whatever Okay. Um, so you guys can do that. And again, thank you. Thank you for attending. Um, next week we have uh, Pace Morby. And so if you guys don't know Pace, he's got 90,000 followers on Facebook. So just, just a couple, just a couple. So um, 90,000 followers on Facebook. And he's going to teach us about sub two financing and a lot of other creative financing to help investors purchase properties and to be able to help more homes being sold. So Thanks, guys. Have an awesome day.